At some point in the distant past, gigantic humanoid monsters called Titans suddenly appeared on Earth. They would feed on any humans they could catch. Humans were no longer at the top of the food chain, and over time, their population began to decline. Even after many civilizations were decimated, humanity had not found a way to fight the Titans. So, instead, they chose to limit their freedom to stay safe. The surviving humans built enormous, concentric walls, thicker and taller than the Titans, around an area to prevent invasions. Two circular walls were constructed, one inside the other, to ensure double protection. Within these walls, they could live a peaceful life. However, the walls did not guarantee protection forever. Even after a hundred years, people lived in fear of the Titans. A young man named Aaron Yeager, who lived in the Outer District, dreams of going beyond the walls one day to explore the world. He often talks to his friends, Armin and Mikasa, about the seas and oceans of the outside world. One day, they decide to go to the border and try to climb the wall to jump to the other side. As they approach the border, the group is shocked by the size of the wall when they see it up close for the first time. Armin and Mikasa are skeptical about the idea, claiming that the Titans may still be outside. But Aaron insists that it's been a hundred years since anyone saw them, and without humans to feed on, they probably died. Their conversation is interrupted when the border patrol arrives to arrest the group for being too close to the wall. Enraged by the police trying to capture his friends, Aaron starts fighting them, completely ignoring the fact that he could be executed for the crime. At that moment, Captain Suda approaches them and asks the soldiers to retreat. He promises to personally punish the group and sends the soldiers away. Suda understands Aaron's desire for freedom but criticizes his actions as childish. He then informs the group about a military approach to explore beyond the walls. He explains that the government has sent some soldiers outside to inspect the situation, so Aaron doesn't have to put his life in danger. Suddenly, a loud explosion startles everyone. An earthquake follows, and the ground starts shaking. The group retreats as the wall moves aggressively. Then, they see what no one expected to see, the terrible image of a colossal giant titan on the other side, larger than the wall. It lets out a monstrous, deafening scream and begins kicking the wall. The patrol officers watch in terror, unable to do anything to stop it. The Titan, after a few kicks, finally breaks the wall and then disappears into the smoke. Everything falls silent for a few seconds. Then, the soldiers see many other giants passing through the hole left behind. The soldiers attack the monsters with cannonballs, which, however, cause little to no damage as they seem to have powerful regenerative properties as the wounds caused by the cannons heal at a rapid rate. Shortly after, the Titans reach the soldiers and start devouring them one by one. Everyone starts running for their lives as the Titans destroy houses and grab as many people as they can. Armin gets lost in the crowd while Aaron and Mikasa run toward the town's church, where people are taking refuge. Mikasa notices a small child on the ground about to be trampled by the running crowd. She goes to save the child but gets separated from Aaron in the process. Aaron is dragged into the church, but people immediately close its entrance, not allowing anyone else in. Aaron watches his dearest friend through the church window as she is approached by a female titan with terrifying teeth. Mikasa knows that nothing can save her now, so she bows her head, accepting her fate. At that moment, a loud explosion throws everyone inside the church backward. When Aaron looks outside again, Mikasa and the titan are nowhere to be seen. He runs outside in search of Mikasa but only finds the ruins of the city that used to be his home. When Aaron turns around, he sees the monsters destroying the church and devouring everyone inside. He then wanders through the destroyed city hopelessly. Ten months after this terrible event, a leader of researcher soldiers named Azuru is sent to the Public Security Command for an inspection. Many soldiers have enlisted in the local army to eventually confront the Titans. Each soldier is striving to their utmost to train and prepare for facing the monsters when the time comes. Izuru will evaluate and select some findings made by the researchers, such as weapons or strategies to defeat the Titans. Among the researchers, there is a researcher named Hang Zoe. She is a researcher who rejects the proposals of the other researchers. Izuru is drawn to her, so after a meeting, he follows her to a research base. He is surprised when Hang suddenly catches him and threatens to kill him. Izura tries to persuade Hang to forgive him for this, she forgives him and says she will show him the secret research subject she has been conducting, making him promise not to tell anyone. 
This subject is nothing less than a hungry titan, trapped in Hang's secret research base. She has been studying this titan for a long time to learn more about it. Izuru, seeing this, is completely perplexed about how his greatest enemy could live and survive in their base without being killed, and he felt that this was very dangerous. Hang then explains that, based on her research, the weakness of the titans was located in the back of their necks. She demonstrates to him that they instantly healed from any wound that wasn't on the nape. Therefore, she continued to work on a tool that could be used to fly and attack the back of the titans' necks. While they were discussing, a superior arrived at the scene and informed them that titans were attacking outside. He asked everyone to hurry and escape. Hang then took action with the intention of saving her research subject. The superior, however, thought she was insane because it was impossible to do. But Hang insisted, and in the end, the titan went berserk, broke free, and grabbed Hang's body. Surprisingly, it didn't harm or devour her. Instead, it became calmer. While Hang saw that there might be some kind of rationality in the titan, Izuru attacked and, climbing on its back, struck the titan with a single blow to the nape, killing it instantly. Hang, seeing this, is shocked and very sad since the titan she had cared for so long died in an instant. Since then, she isolated herself and continued working on her research alone. After a while, Hang proudly presents to the leaders a tool called the three-dimensional maneuvering gear. This tool is a launching device that humans could use to move in the desired direction. She hoped that with this tool, soldiers could more easily defeat the titans. However, mastering the use of this dangerous tool required serious training. Initially, she was not given permission to use this tool as it was considered too dangerous. But Izuru tried to help Hang, and in the end, the tool was authorized for use. Meanwhile, we see Sasha and her dog named Shiro. She leads a tough life, having to survive in the forest with her relatives, hunting for food. She is known as a skilled hunter due to her archery skills, which she uses to hunt animals in the forest for food. When she returns from the forest with her relatives, they find the city in ruins due to the titan attack. This leads her to run to save her aunt and uncle at home and go somewhere safer. However, on the way, Sasha doesn't realize that her dog Shiro ran in the opposite direction when she left to save her relatives. She panics and tries to look for Shiro but is prevented from doing so as it's considered dangerous. Nearby, some soldiers from the base are fleeing but are caught by titans and some devoured. Days later, Sasha ends up joining a protection post and starts training as a soldier. She and other soldiers are trained rigorously to defend against the titans. Time passes, and one year after that, all survivors from the previous titan attack have moved to the inner district. And the army has planned and prepared to reclaim the outer district. After the influx of refugees moving to the inner district and the abandonment of the fertile lands of the outer district, food shortages began to take lives. If this continues, everyone will eventually die of starvation. Their only survival option is to take back the outer district and repair the broken wall. The director of the military forces, named Kubel, gives a speech to the soldiers and calls Hang to the stage. She is now the leader of the troops' weaponry. Hang then demonstrates her creation, the three-dimensional maneuvering gear, which she claims will help them fight against the titans. However, she accidentally almost hits some soldiers with it. Next, we see Aaron and Armin in the military crowd. It turns out that both survived the attack from two years ago and have now joined the army. Aaron wants revenge on the titans for killing the woman he loved, Mikasa. Captain Suda also survived the attack but lost his will to live. He is now a food distributor in the army and an alcoholic. The soldiers plan to invade the outer district at night when the titans will be asleep. They want to close the path through which the giants invaded the city so that no new titans can enter. Afterward, they can kill the remaining ones and reclaim their district. Hang asks everyone to advance slowly and not make noise as the monsters are sensitive to sounds. The entrance to the outer district opens and the army sets out in military trucks. As they advance, the captain abruptly orders them to stop the vehicles, sensing movement ahead. The soldiers look slowly around only to find cows wandering the city. One of the soldiers, named Hiana, hears a baby crying and decides to investigate, putting her life in danger. Aaron follows the girl, and they end up inside a destroyed building. The crying becomes clearer as they progress. Suddenly, a viscous liquid falls on Hiana. They both look up and are horrified to see a huge baby titan devouring a human. 
The baby falls in front of them and starts crying. They run out in fear. The soldiers begin to panic because of the noise, but the captain orders them to stay quiet and not attract any titans. Suddenly, a giant hand emerges out of nowhere and grabs the captain. The titans have awakened, and now the soldiers are in great danger. Aaron and Hiana run toward the group as a giant monster follows them. They start running back to the vehicles, but Commander Kubel senses the danger and escapes with the vehicle and weapons. Kang, from inside the vehicle, tells the group to head to an abandoned building nearby. The soldiers run toward the building but are surrounded by titans before they can escape. They lose all hope when suddenly a titan killer and captain of the scout regiment, Shikishima, appears. He uses a swinging device to kill the titans in the air, hitting the weak spot behind their necks. Shikishima has a female partner as skilled as him. The dead titans fall to the ground and evaporate. Eren finally catches a glimpse of Shikishima's friend and is surprised to see that it's Mikasa. However, Mikasa pays no attention to her old friend and looks at Shikishima, who smiles at her. They then head to the building, followed by the soldiers. It turns out that Commander Kubel appointed Shikishima to assist in the mission. Shikishima saved Mikasa's life that day and even taught her how to fight against the Titans. Since then, they have worked as partners, living in a world of Titans. Mikasa has learned the harsh reality of life and no longer wants to associate with people from her past life. Later, one of the soldiers blames Eren for attracting the Titans earlier and putting everyone's lives in danger. The two start fighting, but they are soon interrupted by Mikasa. Shikishima asks Eren his name and demonstrates his superiority by taking Eren aside to talk privately. Eren tells Shikishima that he wants to learn how to kill the Titans and blames the monsters for trapping them. Shikishima laughs at him, claiming that humans trap themselves, not the Titans. They were too afraid to fight, and their cowardice led them to where they are. He then taunts Eren by calling him a coward. When Eren denies being a coward, Shikishima asks him to set aside his fears and fight the Titans for their freedom. Eren then looks for Mikasa and finds her playing a broken piano. He tries to reunite with her, but Mikasa seems indifferent to his efforts. She says she became a different person when the baby she was taking care of died. Mikasa then reveals a bite mark on her body, showing what the Titan attack did to her. They are interrupted by Shikishima, who feeds Mikasa an apple by hand, demonstrating his affection for her. A desolate Eren runs outside and screams in agony. His only love, for whom he wanted to seek revenge against the Titans, is no longer the person she used to be. At that moment, Kiana approaches Eren and consoles him. The two return to the building and talk while another couple beside them kisses. Hiana becomes emotional as she tells Eren about her daughter, who is back in the inner district. She then tries to seduce Eren and forces herself on him. But they are interrupted when a giant eye stares at them through a window. It quickly grabs Hiana with its mouth, not giving them much time to think. Eren watches as his friend is devoured by the monster. Many other titans approach the building. Shikishima, Mikasa, and other soldiers equip their gear and fight against the Titans. Shikishima kills most of them, along with Mikasa, but many others are injured because it's their first time fighting. Explosives are the only resource that will help them get rid of the Titans in the long run, so Commander Kubel asks everyone to protect them. Meanwhile, the couple that was kissing earlier is attacked, and the man dies in the encounter. The woman is devastated by her lover's death and vows to avenge the creature that killed him. Next, we see someone entering the vehicle with the explosives and driving away. The woman who just lost her lover plans to sacrifice herself and jumps into the vehicle to ignite the explosives. She takes the wheel and drives toward the Titan that killed her lover. When she crashes into the Titan, the explosion causes its legs to disintegrate. However, the attack doesn't work because the Titan's legs quickly grow back. The only way to kill them is to attack their weak spot. Eren is still on top of the building and hasn't helped the others defeat the Titans yet. He recalls Shikishima's words from earlier and uses his three-dimensional maneuvering gear to attack them. He struggles at first but manages to make his first kill with some guidance from Shikishima. However, he loses his balance immediately after and flies straight into the mouth of another Titan. The Titan tears off one of his legs, but Eren manages to save himself by jumping onto the roof. Suddenly, a Titan grabs Armin as he tries to escape. The others try to save him when the Titan is about to devour him. 
Aaron groans in pain but doesn't stop trying to help his friend. He crawls to the edge of the building and jumps into the mouth of the monster, holding it open. Armin is about to slide down the Titan's throat but is saved. However, Aaron falls into the Titan's stomach in the process. There, he is surrounded by several dead bodies, one of them being Hiana. Meanwhile, Mikasa and the others are on a rooftop, where Armin tells her about Aaron's death. Mikasa can't hide her emotions and visibly mourns upon hearing the news. Furious, she goes after the Titans and kills them all. However, her fuel runs out halfway, causing her to fall to the ground. The Titan that devoured Aaron approaches Mikasa and is ready to devour her as well. But suddenly, a hand emerges from the creature's mouth. Soon, its body explodes, revealing another Titan inside it. The newly formed Titan fights against its own kind and kills them one by one. The surviving soldiers watch in amazement as they realize that the new Titan is actually Aaron. After killing all the Titans, the Titan approaches the building aggressively. Aaron seems to have forgotten who he is and goes in intending to attack them. The soldiers retreat in fear, except for Mikasa, who calls Aaron's name. However, he doesn't stop and grabs her. While looking at her, he slowly regains his memory and begins to recognize Mikasa. He then falls dead to the ground and starts to evaporate like the other titans. Mikasa cuts his weak spot, and the human Aaron emerges from the creature. To everyone's surprise, he has regenerated his leg with the help of the creature's regenerative powers. The last titan finally evaporates, and Aaron slowly regains consciousness. A flashback is then shown, when Aaron was a child, where his father experimented with genetic engineering and injected him with a serum capable of turning a person into a titan. Captain Suda was also present and helped hide Aaron when the government came to put an end to his father's experiments. The soldiers led by Commander Kubble took Aaron's parents and killed them while the boy was hiding. The commander burns the laboratory while Captain Suda takes the boy away from danger. Returning to the present, Aaron wakes up in shock and finds himself tied up by the soldiers with weapons pointed at him. Commander Kubble enters the building and begins to expound on his philosophy, explaining how humanity united upon discovering a common enemy, the Titans, even though resources became scarce. Now, everyone is happier because they are equal, but Aaron's ability to transform into a Titan threatens this peaceful existence. Aaron desperately tries to express that he is human, but the commander refuses to allow him to live. Just as Aaron is about to be shot, Armin rushes in and defends his friend, stating that it was Aaron who saved everyone from the Titans. He assures the commander that his friend will be a valuable asset to humanity as he can defend the city against the Titans. Captain Hang also disagrees with killing Aaron but only because she wishes to experiment and study him as a Titan. Armin continues to try to persuade Kubble, telling him that there is a disabled missile near the outer city, and with Aaron's help, they can certainly repair the wall successfully. The boy's attempt to sway the commander only worsens the situation as Kubble accuses Armin of sabotaging the previous mission and destroying the explosives. The commander orders the soldiers to shoot, while Aaron continues to plead with everyone to give him a chance to realize his purpose and help the people inside the city. Seeing their friends about to be killed, Mikasa finally decides to fight for their lives, but the commander questions why she is defending a monster. With no other choice, Suda yells for everyone to stop and proceeds to explain Aaron's powers. Apparently, he can control himself while being a titan, but his consciousness fades over time. Before the man can explain more, a shot is fired and knocks him to the ground. Suda tries to speak with his last breath, but fails and dies suddenly. Suddenly, a titan falls from the ceiling, crushing Commander Kubble and the nearby soldiers. People shoot at the monster, but their attacks bounce off its skin, which seems to be made of armor. The giant easily kills the soldiers with a single blow and grabs Aaron in its hands. They try to attack the titan's neck, but it blocks with its hand, showing signs of consciousness. The titan turns to the soldiers, and Mikasa prepares to defend her comrades. Strangely, the creature looks at her and stops attacking, sparing their lives. The giant then starts climbing out of the building, taking Aaron with it. After Armin buries the dead, Captain Hang takes command and decides to proceed with the plan to restore the wall. They must first retrieve the bomb Armin mentioned and then head toward the outer walls. Mikasa hesitates to return to her hometown but decides she must protect her comrades. At the same time, Aaron wakes up in a white room, hearing old music from over a hundred years ago. 
He turns around only to see a jukebox playing a vinyl record and examines it curiously. The music stops, and he hears the voice of a man who turns out to be Captain Shikishima. The man explains that he saved Aaron from the Titan but failed to kill the monster as it managed to escape. The captain begins showing Aaron images from a century ago, explaining the origins of the Titans. Apparently, humans wanted to create super soldier weapons through genetic engineering and created the giants now known as Titans. However, they lost control of the virus, which began spreading in the population, where people were randomly transforming into Titans and destroying human society. Unaware of who would transform next, humans started fighting each other suspiciously, leading to self-destruction. Somehow, a group of people never transformed into Titans and hid within these walls. Eventually, a government system was formed, which gradually turned into today's society. The white rooms they are in now were built by the government to monitor people, ensuring they forget humanity's past, so they are easier to control. The captain claims that the attack on the walls was planned by the government to instill fear in people as they start to question what lies beyond. However, the captain sees hope in Aaron, as he can maintain consciousness after transforming into a titan. He believes that together, they can prevent the government from enslaving people. The two of them leave, and the captain shows Aaron his followers and a large portion of the explosives he stole from the commander. He also demonstrates the weapons from the time of the wars against the Titans, which are ineffective against the Giants but were used to kill people. Instead, Shikishima gives Aaron the 3D maneuver gear devices and tells the boy that he's in control of his own destiny from now on. Meanwhile, the troop members manage to extract the missile from the ground and plan its course towards the hole in the wall before any Titans notice them. Mikasa watches from a distance, reminiscing about happier times when she was still with Aaron. The group heads towards the city, but Armin stops abruptly when he sees an armored vehicle ahead of their truck. A group of soldiers disembarks and points their weapons at the group, while Aaron gets out of the car and reunites with his friends. He apologizes to Mikasa for making her worry, while the girl is clearly happy to see her friend alive. Shikishima leaps from the vehicle and examines the bomb the group retrieved. Captain Hang gets emotional upon seeing the soldiers' weapons and jumps onto the tank to inspect the machines from the time of the Titan Wars. Shikishima claims ownership of the missile at gunpoint and explains his plan to overthrow the government by destroying the inner walls. The Titans will invade the city and kill the government officials, permanently toppling the current rule. Aaron is shocked by the captain's plan, as he thought they would use the explosives to repair the wall. He questions the fate of the citizens living inside the city, but Shikishima believes they deserve their fate because they allowed such tyranny to exist in the first place. The captain tells Aaron to abandon his past and join the cause, but the boy begins to remember all the deaths and suffering caused by the Titans. He screams in agony and tells the captain that he refuses to forget his past. Seeing that he won't be heard, Aaron charges at Shikishima, but he is immediately thrown to the ground. Aaron gets up and tries to attack the captain again, but the man dodges all of his attacks and quickly counterattacks, knocking him down. He challenges the boy to transform into a titan while Aaron continues to furiously charge at the captain. The boy's attacks are futile as he can't land a single punch and continues to be beaten down on the ground. Mikasa wants the captain to stop beating her friend, but Shikishima laughs and takes the opportunity to demoralize Aaron by forcibly kissing the girl. She slaps the man but only ends up being kicked to the ground. This enrages Aaron, who blindly charges at the captain and becomes a punching bag resistant to Shikishima. Armin tries to come up with a plan to help his friend while looking at the unstable building with his teammate Sanagi. Before Shikishima can finish off Aaron with his own sword, Armin shouts for the man to stop and threatens to detonate everything by triggering the bomb. He tells his teammate to retrieve Aaron and take him to the truck, but the captain doesn't believe Armin's bluff and instructs his man to shoot. Suddenly, a climbing hook pierces through the man's face and hits the unstable building, while Sanagi rushes forward and starts pulling the structure down. He yells at Armin to get out and continues pulling with all his might. The captain's men shoot at Sanagi, but he keeps pulling and manages to topple the building right on top of the bomb. As Armin takes the opportunity to escape, a massive explosion occurs that nearly engulfs their vehicle, but the group manages to escape in time. They look at the explosion and mourn the death of their friend, but Shikishima suddenly appears, somehow having survived as well, and climbs onto the vehicle, declaring that he will get the missile. The captain draws his sword and, to everyone's shock, stabs himself directly in the heart. 
bones begin to protrude from behind his back, and a transformation occurs as the group quickly moves away. Shikishima starts to transform into a titan, with body parts forming on the monster. Armin looks at the giant in shock and realizes that the captain was the monster responsible for taking away his friend and killing Commander Cuff. Aaron plans to stab himself and transform into a titan as well, but Jean stops him because they don't know if that will work for the main character. He tells Aaron that unlike Shikishima, he's not alone, and by working together, they'll defeat the monster. The armored titan approaches the group and demonstrates its power by easily destroying two other titans simultaneously. The team advances toward the titan, attempting to distract it. Sasha seizes this opportunity and shoots an explosive arrow into the giant's eye, temporarily blinding it. Jean flies around the monster and attacks its weak spot between the armor, while Mikasa manages to cut the titan's fingers. Eren flies around the blind spot of the monster and cuts its Achilles tendon, causing the titan to fall to the ground. Jean sees this and flies toward the giant, attempting to deliver the final blow from behind its neck. The armored titan turns and tries to punch him as he approaches, but Eren manages to kick his comrade away and is thrown against the buildings. The armored titan turns and heads for the missile, but before it can grab the explosive, it notices Eren transforming into the berserker titan. Afterward, the titans roar furiously and advance toward each other. The two start exchanging punches, but Eren soon finds himself at a disadvantage, as each blow only harms him due to his opponent's armor. The armored titan dominates the fight and knocks Eren to the ground with a devastating head kick. Shikishima walks toward Eren, planning to end the fight, but the berserker titan grabs the nearby helicopter blade and uses it to strike his enemy. The attack nearly slices the armored titan in half, and Eren gathers all his strength for a final blow that sends the titan flying backward toward the buildings. Shikishima begins to revert to human form as Eren screams in victory. He approaches his friends and begins to lift the bomb from the truck. The berserker titan carries the bomb on its back and starts climbing the wall, with its comrades closely following using their climbing hooks. They reach the junction, and Eren tries to place the bomb on the building but quickly collapses as he's exhausted, and the transformation is starting to make him faint. Mikasa notices this and rushes toward her friend. She pierces the nape of the titan and tries to awaken Eren, reminding him of their promise to take her to see the oceans. Eren manages to regain consciousness after recalling his memories and proceeds to fit the missile into the wall structure. At the same time, Captain Hang manages to survive the previous explosion while inside the armored vehicle. She's surprised by her own luck and starts retrieving rocket launchers from her side, with another mysterious man closely following her. Mikasa successfully pulls Eren out of the Titan, while Armin installs the timer on the explosive, setting it to detonate in five minutes. Just as the team is about to depart, they see Commander coupled behind them on top of the wall as well. The man somehow survived the titan attack and offers money and privileges if they leave the wall as it is and hand Eren over to the government. The team angrily refuses, which leads the commander to shoot at them, injuring Armin in the process. The commander shouts that there's nothing out there, only chaos, and that people need the wall to be happy. Before the man can finish, he's hit by several arrows from Sasha and falls behind the wall. To everyone's surprise, the commander also begins to transform and becomes the colossal titan that destroyed the wall two years ago. The team charges toward the giant to avenge everyone he killed, but they have difficulty approaching as the titan emits high temperatures. The monstrous giant attempts to grab the missile and prevent the explosion while the timer continues counting down to the last second. Jean attacks the titan, trying to stop it from destroying the bomb, but he is killed by a single blow from the monster. The colossal titan turns toward Eren and attempts to grab him, but it's hit by a massive explosion that Captain Hang fired from below. The colossal titan continues to struggle to reach the bomb despite its injuries, giving Eren the opportunity to land behind its back. He approaches the commander, and as the timer reaches the last second, surprisingly, the bomb doesn't explode. The titan was able to damage the detonator, and Mikasa runs toward the bomb to try to fix it but doesn't know what to do. Surprisingly, Shikishima survived the fight with Eren and appears behind the girl. He mocks her efforts to repair the walls and throws Mikasa to the ground. He's disappointed in humanity for choosing safety over freedom because he realizes they'll always try to fix the walls. Mikasa tries to convince the captain that he can still free humanity by destroying the tyrant oppressing the people. At the same time, Eren manages to approach the commander and slices the back of the titan's neck. 
However, the main character is pulled by the Titan's giant hand before he can deliver the final blow. When the Titan is about to kill Eren, the captain scales to the top of the wall while carrying the missile, causing the giant to release the boy from its hand. Chikishima approaches further and thrusts the missile into the colossal Titan's mouth, causing a massive explosion that destroys them both. A chain reaction leads to a second explosion that breaks the top of the wall, causing the concrete to collapse as Eren desperately tries to escape the collapse. The boy falls due to the shockwave, but he's saved by Mikasa, who refuses to let him go. Giant rocks fall in front of the entrance and completely block the hole. Eren and Mikasa escape the fall and climb to the top of the wall. They are ecstatic when they finally see the ocean in the distance and are amazed by its beauty. However, they are unaware of the cameras secretly observing them from behind, and the robotic voice reveals that there are plans for the two in the future.